Imagine this. It's Saturday morning. You've woken up, and for the first time in forever, you're actually rested. You go and grab a cup of coffee or tea, and you proceed to check the news. And by check the news, we mean check your Twitter, your Reddit, and your Facebook. But to your horror, you see that your name is being slandered. You're being called lazy, entitled, useless, and it's only 9 a.m. Not only that, but you and your friends are the main suspect in a series of, of cold-blooded murders. You're accused of killing fabric softener, napkins, and somehow the diamond industry? We are obviously talking about millennials. Apart from this ridiculousness that millennials keep getting dragged into, we actually have a lot to deal with. So actually, if, uh, if you're 14 to 30, can you please raise your peace signs up with me? Me and Deanna, awesome. Now keep those up if you have also found yourself in a puddle of your own tears asking yourself, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> okay, cool, so not just us. And that is part of the reason why we feel like millennial uh, not unlike any other blanket term described, describing a group of people, is just not enough. It in no way accounts for the incredible diversity of people and stories within that group or for the multifaceted struggles that they face. And that is why Maria and I uh, feel like we should toss it out and bring back young people. Hashtag bring back young people. <laughs> So who are we if not entitled selfie-taking avocado hoarders? Well, for one, <laughs> we're the most educated generation to date. And um, we value experience over acquiring material things, building communities around shared interests, and contributing to those communities in a meaningful way. And figuring out that work-life balance isn't quite what it's cracked up to be, uh, we're not huge fans of the 9 to 5 work week. And we're killing that too. Um, Instead, we seek out daily work that is meaningful and flexible. And surprisingly, it turns out we are loyal to companies that share our values and place the same emphasis on ethics and sustainability. But there is a quiet crisis brewing. By 2025, young people will make up roughly 75% of the workforce, an environment that, as it stands, is not really setting us up for success. And with the ever-increasing rate of technology changing the way that we work, we will be facing new challenges and barriers. Current barriers have been identified by the Government of Canada's 2017 Expert Panel on Youth Employment, and they've been neatly organized into the six U's. No, not six U's, six U's. Underprepared, under-resourced, underrated, uncertain, unaccepted, and under-resourced. And some of the challenges young people face include insufficient resources for holistic health, um, lack of information on the labor market, which in turn impacts their ability to acquire relevant skills, and also discrimination from employers in, based on age, gender, disabilities, any other subconscious and conscious biases. And all of this, and a lot more, leaves youth competing for jobs not only with each other, but very soon with emerging cognitive technologies. And as a result, we'll see, youth pe we'll see young people juggling several jobs, often involving more precarious work and one-off gigs, and continuing to swim in a sea of career and life uncertainty. It is, is this how we want to set up our future taxpayers? Because I don't think so. <laughs> it's important now more than ever to focus on the well-being of our youth. And this means, for one, having the ability to predict what will matter most in the coming years. So for example, with cognitive technologies, skills like empathy or critical thinking or general problem solving will be well sought after in the workplace. And not only do we have to have the foresight, but we need to be proactive in the way we educate and prepare our young people. We need to ensure that there are diverse and interdisciplinary opportunities for both personal and professional growth and resilience building. Only through engaging in these sort of experiences can youth truly become prepared for our ever-changing and ever-evolving world. Obviously, it's a lot more complicated than that because these challenges that we're discussing, the challenges that we and other youth face are systemic and require a more consolidated long-term approach. Um, and they require multiple stakeholders. So it really takes a village. And this is us calling upon you, our village. Where do we start when there are so many moving variables? How can we move things in a more positive direction? Well, we're no experts by any means, and we're still definitely confused in figuring things out, but we've talked about this a lot, and we have researched this a lot, and the most comprehensive solution that we've found so, so far can be boiled down to three words, recognition, intention, and action. 
Recognition refers to researching and understanding the perspectives of our current reality um, and the escalating challenges that comes with it. So this means seeking out the youth perspective and also understanding the multiple players and, um, and variables that influence this future situation. Intention is all about going within and cultivating awareness. It involves questioning our current beliefs and mapping out our core values so that we can prepare ourselves to move from a place of connect. This can be as simple as taking five minutes for, for contemplating practices like meditating or journaling. And finally, action. While intention and recognition pave the way for, um, I guess, identifying our place within the ecosystem, um, they ultimately pave the way for taking meaningful action. And so a great place to start would be to seek out and give your time, your resources, to the wonderful youth-centric initiatives that already exist within our communities. Alternatively, we could also all become youth champions in both our personal and professional lives. And by mentoring young people and seeking out their perspective and acknowledging it, we can help to create opportunities that are embedded in learning during post-secondary education. There is no shortage of areas in which even minimal action can make a remarkable difference. While the rapid advances made in technology create a more connected and global world, they're, they also continue to threaten the way that we work and threaten potentially our prosperity. And so this wave is leaving young people with stagnant incomes, rising living costs, less time, and more debt. And ultimately can eventually translate into a delay in their ability to fully participate in society. But there is good news, <laughs> there is. And that is that this moment brings up with the amazing opportunity for us as young people parents, friends, governments, employers, educational institutions, everyone to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you.